Lookups are one of the most important functions that Excel professionals need, so it's important for us to learn all the different types out there. I'm Jess and welcome back to another episode of Learn Excel on Mac with Jess. Today we're going to deep dive into three different functions, VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH, and XLOOKUP, so that you can familiarize yourself with how they work, what the differences between them are, and find the one that is easiest for you to use and offers the most capability. So let's take a look at our data set today. I have here an export of SAP Actuals that tells us all the expenses that have been incurred in the period. In column C, I have the general ledger code or GL code. I have the requester name, what expenses are such as salaries, travel or breakfast and the dollar amount. I also have here a lookup tab that tells me basically what are all those general ledger codes mean. For example, GL610000 is one for salaries and it is an employee cost that is considered a fixed cost. So our task now is to be able to translate this column C of GL code into the GL description and span category. And this is where lookups are helpful because instead of me manually looking up what each of these digits mean, I can just use a lookup function to do that for me automatically. So let's take a look at how we can do that with VLOOKUP. So let's put an equal sign VLOOKUP. Lookup value is the cell you're trying to translate, which is here in cell C7, comma, the table array. So let's go back to that lookup tab. Click on C because this is where the GL code sit and move it to the right all the way to the end of the table. C to E, comma. So now the column index number is asking for out of those columns C, D, and E, which column is the one that you want to return? And since right now we are working on that GL description translation, this is the second column out of that C to E. So we're going to put number two to tell Excel to return the values in that column, and we're going to put false as an exact match. And that is your VLOOKUP. So GL610029 means overhead. So again, let's do the same thing for span category. We're going to do VLOOKUP, cell C7, and the table array. Oh, wait a minute. The span category is actually to the left of the GL code. What happens now? So this is actually one of the drawbacks of VLOOKUPs is that when you're doing your table, your, your lookup table, the return value has to be to the right of your lookup, which is very inflexible. And the other thing that you have noticed is that you have to specify which nth column you want Excel to return. So for us, we have that too. But imagine if your table is 20 or more columns. It's just not very user friendly. The good news is there is a better alternative to VLOOKUP, and it is called index match. Index match is great because it doesn't matter where your lookup column and your return columns are. So let's take a look at that. Index and array is asking for the return value. So we actually have to go to the lookup tab, click on column B for span category, comma, type in match and it's asking for the lookup value. So for us, we would need to go here to cell C7. Lookup array is asking where should Excel look for that GL code 610029. So we would go back to the lookup tab, click on column C and put zero for exact match and a couple of close parentheses and you're done. So this is great because it makes your column placements very flexible and you don't have to specify which nth column you need Excel to search. So I used to be a user of index match for a long time until XLOOKUP came out. And after that, I never looked back on VLOOKUP or index match ever again. So let's see what all that hype is all about. So I was super excited when XLOOKUP came out. It is one formula, but you can use it 
for as basic as you want or for more complex calculations. So let's see how we do that with XLOOKUP to translate the GL codes in column C into the GL description in column H. Equal sign XLOOKUP. The lookup value, this is the GL code that you're trying to translate, comma. So both the lookup array and the return array are basically the columns in your translation dictionary table that you need to specify to tell Excel where to look up that GL code 610000 and what value do you want to return. So for both of those, we're going to go to the lookup tab. The lookup array is in column C because that GL code is in this column. And then once it's found, go here to the return array. Close parentheses. And that's XLOOKUP. Very basic, very easy. You don't have to specify the number of columns. You don't have to combine an index and match function. Just your good old XLOOKUP. So those are the basic, but XLOOKUP actually has more capabilities that are optional towards the end of the formula that you don't have to use all the time, but they're very, very cool. So let's take a look at them. So I want to go back to the example we just did. So you could take a look at those optional capabilities that XLOOKUP has. The first one is if not found. This is essentially a replacement for an if error or if any that you may have done in the past in combination with a VLOOKUP. This tells Excel what to do if that GL code you're trying to search is actually not in the lookup tab. Again, you don't have to use this. And if you don't want to use this, it's fine. Just put another comma to move on to the next one. But if you do want to use it, you can basically put anything you want. You can put zero, you can put NA or not found. And that way Excel looks cleaner. So we'll just test it out. So I'm going to change this to 88888 as you can see that GL description changed from salaries into not found because this code 88888 does not exist here in the lookup table. I'm going to undo that. The next feature that I want to show you is called the match mode in XLOOKUP. So going here again, I'm just going to delete the closing parentheses so you can see what it looks like. Match mode has four options. The default one, if you don't choose anything, is zero for exact match. That means find exactly GL code 610000 in this case in the lookup tab and return me the GL description. But there are times when it's useful to use the negative one for exact match or next smaller item or plus one, which is exact match or next larger item. This is useful, especially if you have ranges and you don't have an exact number, but you want that a lookup to be within the range. So let's see how that works with a different example. I'm actually going to hide this and open here a spend reviewer. Using again the lookup tab, we're going to convert this dollar amount into a spend reviewer. So let's look at my lookup tab that I provided for this. It's a spend reviewer matrix. So in companies, right, there are different thresholds as to what spend level needs to be reviewed and or approved by whom. So in this example, anything a million dollars or above, the CFO has to approve. But if it's something between $100,000 and 999999, that would be the senior controller. And we can use XLOOKUP to indicate who does what. So let's see. So we're going to look at XLOOKUP again. And this time, the lookup value is the dollar amount because this is what we're trying to, again, translate from dollar to reviewer. Click comma. Same lookup array is this in column H because this is where the dollars are held. Return array is here in column I. And we don't have to use if not found, like I said. So we're going to skip that. And the match mode. On this one, we probably want the negative one, which is the match item or something lower below that. So we're going to close it and there is controller. I'm just going to test a couple of things here. So let's look at the salaries for 140,000. It says here senior controller. Let's just double check ourselves. Yep. Anything below a million but above 100K goes to the senior controller. Next one on the match mode that is super cool is called the wildcard. This is particularly helpful if you want to look up something, but you're not quite sure what it is exactly. So let's say you want to look up how much VJ has spent here. 
but you forgot his name. Maybe you only remember that it starts with a V or you just know his first name but not last name. Or the other way, you just know Gupta, the last name, but not his first name. You can specify to Excel that this is a wild card, so it's not an exact match, and XLOOKUP will do that for you. If I only have the V in this case, I'm going to do an XLOOKUP, and what you want to do is click on this, the cell that you want, with an ampersand, double quotation mark, asterisk, double quotation mark, and that is your lookup value. It says to say it starts with a V and then there is something else after that. Click on comma. The lookup array will be here in column D because this is where all the requester names are. Click on the return array, which is column F. And for the if not found, like I said, it's optional, so we don't need it here. We're just gonna skip it with another comma. And very, very important to put two for the wildcard character match. We'll do that. And there you go, 350. Again, this would work if you have VJ, still 350. So what happens with Gupta? Let's look at what that means. Oh, it's NA. And the reason for that is because we're saying that the Gupta is still in the front. So if you want to change this, that you only know the last name, but don't know the first name, you actually have to move this double quotation mark, asterisk, double quotation mark in the front and ampersand, and then delete this other one. So it goes asterisk, and then Gupta. Again, same lookup array, same return array, and two to specify the wildcard search. The last component of just using a straight XLOOKUP is what is called a search mode. Just to show you quickly, using this example, I'm going to delete again the parentheses so you can look right here, search mode. So there are four options here, and most of us will probably only use the first two, which is one for search first to last, or negative one for search last to first. These two just means tell Excel, do you want to look at the earliest data point or the latest one if you have kind of multiple items using that query. Um, so this is particularly helpful if you want to look for the earliest or the latest spends data or sales data. So let's see how you do that. And for this example, we're actually going to use the payroll line item because as you can see here, we have multiple payroll line items in our table. So let's again find um, the earliest or the latest payroll spans data. X lookup, lookup value is payroll, comma, lookup array, column D, and return dollar amount. If not found, we'll just skip that. We'll also skip the match mode for here. And let's look at the first to last one, so the earliest. So I'll press, and it's $30,000, which is the first payroll line item. So again, if you are we're trying to search the last payroll line item, you would simply delete this and choose the negative one instead, close parentheses, and it would give you the $140,000. The next thing that I want to show you on XLOOKUP is how to do a two-way lookup with a table. Let's say you are provided this data here, which has the salaries, bonus, and overhead by month. And you want to be able to switch and look up certain combinations. So let's say bonus in March or salary in February and so on. We're going to use XLOOKUP to do that. So under here, under spends, we're going to do equal sign, XLOOKUP. We're going to choose bonus. Lookup array is here because this is where they can find that bonus. And on the return array, instead of the usual numbers, we're actually going to do another XLOOKUP function. And here is asking what is the lookup value. So the other combination is the month. We're going to choose March. Lookup array is here. And the return array is the entire table here, all the numbers. And that's it. $5,000, which is correct, which is the modus in March. Let's just change it to salaries in January, $500, and we're good. So that is the overview and evolution of the lookup functions, VLOOKUP, index match, and XLOOKUP. I really, really enjoy XLOOKUP for the simplicity of it, for the flexibility, and that it's just way more powerful and has more functions than the other ones. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that others can also find it easily. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.